everyone. Welcome to Reach Higher Riverside, where we share all Reach Higher stories happening in the greatest county in the nation. My name is Priscilla Grijalva, and I work at the best high school in the world. This month, we have a special interview with Ricky Cherry. He's the College Board Associate Director for K-12 State and District Partnerships. You may have seen him around as he's done presentations and workshops in Riverside with his teammate, Kenyatta Price. They both are amazing people, and I'm extremely grateful for them. Uh, they're such positive people to be around if you ever get the chance to meet them. And uh, one of the things that I loved about Ricky talking with him in this interview is he got all excited and uh, passionate about talking about free money for students. And if you know me, uh, I'm a huge advocate for free money for our students. Thank you, Ricky, for sharing that passion with me. But before we go into that interview with Ricky, we have a short audio with Eric Waldo, the Executive Director of Reach Higher. Normally during the month of May, schools across the country celebrate College Signing Day at their school sites. Due to COVID-19, schools are now celebrating virtually. Don't forget to hashtag College Signing Day and Reach Higher to let them know what you're up to. Also on June 6th, Reach Higher, Michelle Obama and President Barack Obama will be doing a virtual graduation commencement ceremony for the class of 2020. Be sure you check out Reach Higher social media for information. Hi everybody, I'm Eric Waldo and I'm the Executive Director of Reach Higher. First, I just want to say, I hope you're staying safe and staying at home. These are scary times and there's nothing more important than your safety. Because of that, we know that College Signing Day is going to look a little bit different this year. But we still want to celebrate all of you. Starting on May 1st, we want to lift you up, tell your stories, and see what you're doing at home. We still know that today, making a choice to pursue your education past high school, whether a two-year program, a community college, a four-year program, pursuing the military, or getting a certificate or credential is still the best investment you can make in your future. So instead of a big rally or a rally with hundreds of students in your community, we want you to tweet, to text, to post on social media from home and tell us your story. Post a selfie with hashtag College Signing Day and let us know what you're doing from home to celebrate your extraordinary decision. We're so proud of you for all you've accomplished this year. We want to celebrate you. Thank you, and we'll see you online. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm with Ricky Cherry. I had the honor to meet him at some Riverside County webinars, and also he's done workshops across the county. So uh, I would like him to introduce himself. Hello, my name is Ricky Cherry, um, Associate Director for the College Board's Western Regional Office. So Ricky, can you tell us where you went to college and um, what your degree was in? Um, yeah, I took the long way in the college. So right out of high school, I went to Cal State Fullerton. My perception of college was a little different than what college actually was. So it didn't fare too well there. I ended up going to Santa Ana College where I played football for two years. Got an offer to play college football in Minnesota, but then ended up going to Cal State Dominguez Hills where I finished my degree in uh, business administration with an emphasis in marketing. And how did you get involved with the college board? Pure luck. <laughs> no, it is. It's pretty funny. Uh, actually, I worked in higher education for about five years end up leaving the college that I was at, Vanguard University, if any of you guys want to know about, Southern California, Costa Mesa. Was out of education for a while and wanted to get back in it. And I think I found it on um, just a website and I applied. And when my first um, application, I got down to me and another young lady and they picked her actually. But then I always still wanted to get an education. So I kept like looking, looking, looking. And then uh, maybe a couple of months, maybe about almost a year later, there was another opportunity for a college board. I applied for it. They remembered me, and then that's how I got the job. Yeah, we well, you've done some great work in Riverside, and um, you and Kenyatta have done a, a ton of presentations. Kenyatta's come out to our school, so shout out to you and Kenyatta Price for all your help that you do in Riverside. Yeah, Kenyatta's amazing, great uh, leader, mentor, and uh, she loves the Inland Empire with a passion. Yes, she's amazing. I truly agree with that. So can you talk about some resources school counselors can use in the Educator College Board portal? Uh, so yeah, actually we do have a site for counselors. So it's collegeboard.org forward slash counselors. Um, it's a great resource to use as far as getting handouts, PowerPoints, um, just tips and information. 
um, and it's dedicated directly towards counselors. It talks about the different services that we have, such as like AP um, assessment, uh, financial aid, things like that. So I, I feel that it's probably one of the best resources that we have available. I've used the dashboard to run like AP pot potential letters for our students. And uh, recently, just to give you a quick story, I had a student that was failing all of his classes and sent him an AP potential letter and it just like sparked an interest in his life. Like he all of a sudden like turned his life around and was getting good grades and wanted to go to college. So so that was just like really encouraging to see that. Can you talk about some of the uh, the letters you have in the dashboard and how counselors can utilize that? Um, they're not necessarily letters. The kind of the tool that you're using is an amazing tool and that's basically what it's for is kind of find those diamonds in the rough. Every year we kind of have a counselor, kind of like a counselor meeting called our counselor workshops where uh, we have them across all of, the, all of all of the country, all over where counselors can come and we give them updates. Basically, that's what the, the you know, the resources that's available online is kind of that year round. So it's um, it's a place where they can get information, like I said, about how to write a recommendation letter or uh, information about like NC2A and kind of the rules and regulations that you have to follow with them. It, it kind of tells you about like how to read at our assessment report because sometimes that could be a little bit cumbersome. So we just have tons of resources like that available to, to you guys all over. Yeah, and what about any COVID-19 resources that you guys currently posted? We are COVID-19 out. Um, we have <laughs> tons of COVID-19 information. We just have something, we have uh, COVID-19 information for students as far as uh, when they take the exam, practice resources. We have the YouTube AP classes that we're doing now to help review the stuff that you went over at the beginning of the year. Um, we have information for educators, so kind of what the AP coordinators and what teachers can be doing as far as using the My AP Classroom to send out resources or practice for AP coordinators just to kind of know what their role is in this next step. We have information just we have so much information out there available and I try my best to you know disseminate to you guys uh, so that it makes it a bit easier but it, it, it may be a little bit difficult sometimes just looking at all this stuff and a little overwhelming but we have webinars one pagers uh, schedules tons of stuff for not only the parent the student you know the educators but for, just for everybody so everybody is fully aware of what's going on yeah that's awesome what can educators do to encourage students to use the Khan Academy and at what age can the students start using it so you can use Khan anytime like I have um, I have an eighth grader who uses Khan for his math but Khan is a great resource they're an amazing partner um, we've partnered with Khan uh, to offer free SAT prep. So for anybody that's taken any of our assessments, they can get a free personalized practice through Khan. So um, I would encourage students using Khan from junior high all the way up to high school. Uh, can you talk about the College Board scholarships like FAFSA and, and all the great resources you have out there? FAFSA, I'm not an expert on, but College Board resources, I get excited and I, I, I tend to stand on a soapbox. So if you see me like raise up a little bit or hear my voice, um, you know, raise and, and, and lower is because I love kind of the resources that we have for scholarships. Everybody typically knows us for the um, National Merit Scholarship. So that's the NMSQT part of the PSAT is a National Merit Qualifying Scholarship Test. So basically that's how 11th graders are eligible. But when taking our assessments, we partnered with over 20 other scholarship partners to offer, you know, about $350 million worth of scholarships for people. So we have scholarships based on ethnicity. We have scholarship based off of merit. We have scholarship based off of location. We just have so many scholarships that are available to students. Um, not necessarily saying that you're able, you get money automatically, but what you do is you get offered to apply for these scholarships. So instead of you having to find the scholarships, the scholarships will find you. And is that something that they automatically get when they take the PSAT? They'll automatically get that information or how do they find it? Yeah, so what happens is when you take the um, one, one of our assessments, there's a box that says student search services. And if you by marking that, you're able to notify our scholarship partners as well as our colleges about the type of student that you are. And so this is also something for when colleges are looking for a certain type of student that can start sending you information about their college so that you can make an informative decision. Um, another thing that we have is Big Future. Big Future is an amazing tool, and then it helps support one of our newest scholarship opportunities, which is called the Opportunity Scholarship. 
Now, this scholarship is, is based for juniors and seniors. Um, you start your, your, your junior year and um, it goes on to your senior year, but it's an amazing scholarship opportunity that requires um, no essay, no GPA, no letter of recommendation. It's all based off of effort. So what happens is there's six steps that you take three your junior year and three your senior year. And by you completing these steps, you can be eligible for individual scholarships. But if you complete all six steps, you can be eligible for up to a $40,000 scholarship. Oh, wow. And so what's great about this is so you, you would, it's basically based off your college planning using the big future tool. So you can do stuff like submit a college list. So you'll pick a couple colleges, uh, basically with practicing on Khan Academy, you can be eligible for a $1,000 scholarship. Um, refining your college list, you know, once you, you pick something, maybe refining to your the ones you know that you'd be able to get in plus a couple of dreams colleges you want to go to. You have information about improving your score. If you improve your score on Khan Academy, you can be eligible for a scholarship. Completing the FAFSA and then applying to college. So, so if you're able... Go ahead, Ricky. No, so I'm just saying, so like if you do each of those steps... You can be eligible not for the individual scholarship, but the comprehensive scholarship as well. And what's great is, is so like if you're doing the um, submitting your college list, if you make a change to one of your colleges, you can be eligible again. So you can re-win a scholarship if you already won. So oh, like, wow. It's a really, really cool thing that we're doing. Like I said, it's, it's based off of Big Future. Big Future is an amazing site that we have. It's a college planning resource site. Everything you want to know about college is on Big Future. What's amazing is that you can it has information for parents, it has information for counselors, kind of what you should be looking for. It has demographic information about school, knowing the difference between a commuter school versus, you know, um, on campus school, knowing the difference between a, a four year public and a four year private. Tons of information is on there. So is the scholarship just for four year colleges or is it also for like career technical education? For any college. Oh, awesome. And like That's I good said, to know. And all you have to do is just go sign up, and it's based off of effort. So I basically, when I usually say talk about this, how many people like free money because this is what it is. It's free money. And especially it doesn't matter if you are you have a GPA of a, you know 1.5, which I hope not, or if you have a 4.0, everybody is on equal ground. Okay, that's awesome. I'll keep sharing those resources. Can you talk about that some college is going test blind? What, what's your take on that? Yeah. Um, just my personal take on that is I think the, the SAT gets a bad rap when it comes to test optional um, or going test blind. There's so many characteristics that colleges look for when, you know, admitting students. However, you know, colleges want the best student. And so if it's not going to be the SAT, it's going to be something else that they're going to judge you on. So, you know, um, like if you look at the UC the UCs only don't look at uh, SAT. There's 14 other, or there's going to be 13 other um, criteria that they look for when determining a candidate. But, you know, the SAT is the one that gets the, you know, we're the bad guy or, or you know, we're the, we're the determining factor when actually we're not. So, yeah. um, like I said, I, I just me personally, and uh, this is Ricky talking, not college <laughs> board, but right. just me, me talking, I think that, like I said, if, if they have to find something to distinguish you, if it's not going to be one thing, it's going to be another, they still accept them. That's the weird thing. So they may not, you know, use it as a criteria, but they still accept them. And ultimately that may be the determining factor. So it may not be required, but it's a good thing if you do it anyways. Exactly. Okay. If you could change one thing in education, what would it be? Oh man, equality. I wish that, you know, uh, school would be equal for, for, for everybody. People get the same opportunities throughout, whether you're, you know, in Beverly Hills or you're in Compton, that everybody gets the same chances is on the same level playing field. Yeah, I have to agree. I, I just saw something that College Board put out. I think it was yesterday or the day before about uh, laptops possibly distributing to students that need them for AP. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, we, we changed the way that we did AP this year. And so um, at first it was kind of a big rumble. But if we didn't change the way that we did AP this year, we wouldn't be where we are at now being able to offer AP to students and offer them devices in order to do that. So, um, yeah, it's been a blessing. What is your why for this work? I'm sorry, what was that? What is your why for this work? Oh, man, I, I love working with kids. I love helping support kids and, you know, giving them opportunity. I'm, I'm real big on, on, you know, helping the next man so that they can pay it forward. So I think that's my why. Is there anything else you would like our listeners to know? Yeah, please take a look. You guys take advantage of your opportunities um, just because you, 
you may feel that you're in a certain place or you're not a certain uh, type of student. There's opportunities for everybody. Um, take advantage of, of the practice. Once again, I'm standing on my soapbox and talk about Khan and the awesome partnership. When I was in uh, high school, we didn't have the opportunity of free SAT practice. You know, it, it was at a cost and the cost was uh, very significant. I just wanted to say, just take advantage of that. You know, no matter who you are or where you are, you know, you can still succeed and and um, and basically do what you need to do in order to get to where you need to go. Take advantage of the opportunity scholarship. Like I said, it's free money by just doing effort, you know, picking three colleges or five colleges and or just practicing with con things like that. That's stuff that you, I feel that you probably should be doing anyway, going into your senior year and seniors should be doing that um, when, you know, picking out the colleges they want to attend. Yeah. And, and that's it. Um, also, too, I have a friend that used to went to um, to Norte and he always talks about how cool you guys are. So I want to give a shout out to my boy, Cody Marshan, um, who went to Norte class of, he was, he's old. So, you know, even a long time ago, but he always talks about how cool you guys are. Oh, well, thank you. Well, huge shout out to an Norte Vista grad. That's awesome. And I have to agree with you. I wish we had con when, when I was in high school, I didn't have that resource and we didn't have the money to pay for extra help with the SAT. So I, I appreciate that you guys have that. Yeah. And you know what? It was basically about how to beat the SAT. Those are the classes that I took. But now this is helping you with the skills that you need in order to improve. Um, and it's personalized for you. So you're not getting a book and have to start from page one. This is something that, you know, you can It just basically helps you with what you need to work on while maintaining what you already do well. And at the end of our podcast, we like to do the sunshine spotlight. Can you name at least one thing that's made you happy this week? Ooh, wee. One thing that's made me happy this week. Man, that, I think that's the hardest question you've asked the whole time. Uh, one thing, the sun is out and the NFL draft is next week. Let's go New York Giants. I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh. Yeah, you might a, disown me now. I'm sorry. I, I may, may have been knocked down a little bit, but you're still good. Well, my sunshine spotlight is I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan. And so there's a Michael Jordan documentary coming out April 19th. So yes. I, uh, I got ESPN just to watch that. And I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So that, that's going to yeah. be a fun watch. Let, let me yeah. know what you think about it. I, I will. But Ricky, I just want to thank you so much for being on our podcast. I appreciate you answering the emails and phone calls and all the work you do across uh, Riverside and across the nation. Um, if you could just say goodbye to everyone out there listening. Um, goodbye. Thank you guys from Nora Vista. Appreciate you guys. Everybody in Riverside, San Bernardino, Orange, LA counties. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ricky. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. And one more quick announcement. On May 13th, KGGI 99.1 Radio will be doing a virtual Zoom celebration, college signing day, for all students in the Inland Empire and Riverside area going on for more education or training, such as community college, career technical education, apprenticeship, university, or enlistment in the military. So thank you to KGGI 99.1 Radio for honoring the class of 2020 and their reach higher commitments. Check out their social media for more information. We will also repost it on our Reach Higher Riverside social media. Thank you to Eric Waldo from Reach Higher for his audio. And thank you to Ricky Cherry for his interview today. Hope you guys have a great week. Thank you for tuning in to Reach Higher Riverside. You can follow us on Twitter at RH Riverside. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Reach Higher Riverside. You can also subscribe to our iTunes or Google Play Music and give us a rating. Thank you so much for listening in. We appreciate all of you tuning in. And as Michelle Obama would say, when they go low, we reach higher.